Folks, in the same module, let us also look at what is happening in the coming uh, currently in the industrial world. And uh, it is not low power wide area networks, it is neither uh, low power uh, area uh, systems, but it is somewhere in the middle. You want to build let us say a very reliable wireless network for industrial applications. Okay, that is the idea and how do you do that? A fast upcoming standard is the mesh networking standard for Bluetooth low energy. So, BLE mesh has picked up uh, quite, a, uh, quite a bit and uh, since uh, in our lab we have been doing some work in that uh, space, I thought it is important to show you a small demo, excite you into building future networks which are based on mesh systems, ideally suited for inside indoor applications. If you want to do indoor localization, you can use mesh networks, you can use these mesh systems you want to do industrial monitoring of machines in a reliable way under highly noisy conditions, uh, RF noise conditions, lot of equipment emitting uh, RF radiation can disturb uh, packets which are flowing on the wireless link, right. So, all of that essentially means uh, you should you need reliable communication to uh, uh, you know in order to make your actions either you take an action or you want to close the loop or you do want to do a control action and so on. So, that essentially brings you to very exciting protocol. Here what we did was we uh, downloaded an article to give you an overview of where we are with respect to uh, the Bluetooth mesh networking place. You can see it is for many to many, ideally suited for creating IoT solutions and uh, you can have thousands of devices that need to be reliably and securely uh, communicating with one another. Uh, one good thing that will happen if you do mesh based networking with Bluetooth is the human holds a phone in the hand and this human holding the phone in the hand allows you to get data also on the phone. That is really amazing right. You have an industrial network and uh, it is all connected with the Bluetooth mesh and then I go with my mobile phone which also has Bluetooth. I can enter that mesh and I can start getting data right. Well, you may say that that is a secure network how can you just enter and get the data from it. Yeah, there are ways by which you can make your mobile phone secure and part of that mobile network. That is where the whole game is. You have to look at how to provision my phone in the pocket to be part of that mesh network so that I can securely receive data. What do you mean provisioning my phone? It simply means some encryption key or some security related data will also have to sit in my phone so that it is all part of that mesh and uh, I my phone becomes part of that mesh and I can start seeing the data. So, essentially all that is supported in the mesh networking paradigm and essentially uh, there are some three major applications which they sh show here. One is for control systems to uh, set up uh, Bluetooth mesh quickly and uh, essentially it could include lighting control for smart building, smart industry markets and so on. You can also do monitoring, uh, simple monitoring. Uh, it could be for lighting, temperature, humidity and occupancy and all that. Recall what we discussed about the uh, blinds, window blind examples which we do, uh, did in the beginning. All those window blind examples can actually be realized with uh, Bluetooth uh, mesh uh, systems. Then of course, automation. It allows you to, um, you can do build, uh, you can build very compelling applications for automation. It could include ventilation, air conditioning to harness energy savings and lower operating costs and so on. So, all of that essentially means that the stack has uh, the Bluetooth stack has become uh, quite uh, uh, extensive enough to support uh, this uh, mesh network uh, providing you reliability, scalability and without any compromise on the security of the uh, system. Now, the Bluetooth mesh is interoperable that means, it any vendor can uh, participate in this mesh and uh, devices can be heterogeneous need not be coming from the same vendor because there is indeed a full stack solution and this and there is a standard for implementation. So, interoperability is between uh, vendors is possible and there are uh, good enough tools uh, for you to understand uh, the whole process by which this multi vendor interoperability is working successfully or not. As I mentioned to you uh, mesh you can use for location services you can be part of monitoring and so on 
and so many other uh, monitoring and other applications and so on. So, that is an important uh, thing. Now, NRF uh, Nordic has actually provided an SDK for uh, mesh uh, technology, but before we go into the detail as I mentioned to you uh, we must look up the NRF uh, SDK for Nordic has actually offered a be beautiful uh, startup kit on their uh, uh, FITU series uh, uh, components uh, that parts which are available microcontroller parts and here are some of the features of it. You can see that uh, you can configure the mesh for relay nodes as well as end nodes. Okay. Then the uh, stack uh, actually talks about uh, if you look at the software stack you can be talking about advertising bearer which are these hard lines that you see here. Uh, you see these hard lines these are all advertising bearers and then there is a gap uh, also which is uh, from the old traditional uh, generic access uh, uh, protocol uh, part which is also out there. So, it is a combination of adding additional things into the uh, protocol stack which will support the mesh uh, systems. So, you can support uh, securely several hundreds of devices and this is a nice picture. Okay. So, how does this mesh work? It purely works on scanning and advertising. Uh, so, every packet is broadcasted until the packet is received by the destination. So, you use what is known as flooding. So, it is a flooding mesh may not be all that energy efficient, but surely it is a reliable mesh because of the fact that uh, it, flush, uh, it floods and then uh, packets are received by multiple nodes. The relay node has the job of re-relaying the packet that is the only difference between the RN and an end node. Okay. Now, you may also want to say that is it not going to add to a lot of excessive traffic? Yes, indeed because each time you are flooding and each node that picks up has to re uh, broadcast it, it is a lot of flooding. right? So, to avoid the excessive and unnecessary network traffic, there are mechanisms okay, to reduce the traffic. For example, adjustable scanning and advertising intervals uh, you can uh, sort of tune and uh, time to live is also an important parameter here and how many times the uh, packet can be broadcasted is also there. Each time you receive it, you broadcast it may be a count is decremented by 1 and then once it becomes 0 you stop broadcasting it. So, you can control it. So, latency and power consumption are related right. So, how much time is spent in scanning and advertising means if you put it very large number there is obviously going to be a latency hit for you. So, an average uh, latency is on an average is 15 milliseconds per hop when configured for minimum uh, latency and power consumption okay, and, uh, and it is determined by a large extent by the receive current of the device. Of course, when the state machine at the receiver is uh, of the transceiver chip is in the receive mode, the current consumed in the receive mode is the one that actually determines. So, these details are given here. Now, I mentioned to you about the uh, architecture which is a uh, lot more uh, exhaustive compared to the old uh, Bluetooth that we know very well. You can see the mesh uh, figure is shown here and uh, you have bearer network uh, which is added, you have transport access and foundation models. Now, all these above uh, layers, uh, above all these above this uh, layers, above these layers the mesh models are defined, you have uh, lighting model, you have sensor model and so on. So, you have different types of models which are up out there. Okay. These are called the mesh models, uh, you can define several of them uh, independently. There is also, uh, so the idea here is it is possible to connect with phones, tablets and all that and become part of the Bluetooth mesh at the same time. This is the exciting part that I mentioned that you can go with your phone and start participating into, you can get into the mesh quite easily. The uh, beacon API uh, which I show you here is also here as you can see this is the beacon API and what this is is essentially uh, it is the mesh uh, Bluetooth mesh as the backbone network to push uh, push out the updates. Okay. Uh, it has a the common use case of Bluetooth mesh is to have a beacon functionality. This uh, SDK supports beacon firmware API to support concurrent beaming uh, be a beaconing and uh, mesh networking. And uh, there is a mesh serializer as you can see here, there is a mesh serializer here and its job is uh, you can uh, control it with a UART. You want to build let us say a mesh gateway, you want to bridge between Bluetooth mesh and other protocols. You can use this mesh serializer 
to pull out the data and feed it into ethernet and so on. So, it will support you a UART okay, uh, with the support for UART. So, it is nothing but uh, UART support for the Bluetooth mesh uh, by, by which you can take the data and uh, recast it as ethernet or any one of them. Okay. Then there is over the firm air firmware upgrade. Uh, so, there are different air over the air modes and uh, you can use them as well. So, what is very critical in this whole discussion is about provisioning. Now, before any device including the example I gave you about my, my, my mobile phone entering that network before you can start participating in the mesh it must be provisioned. Okay. What exactly this means is uh, in during this provisioning process the device gets added to the network and is assigned a range of unicast addresses it is assigned some address a network key as well as a device key. These three things will be there every time you do a provisioning minimum these three unicast address uh, addresses uh, a network key and uh, a device key all three are there. Now, once the provisioning is done by the provisioner uh, the provisioner itself is expected to be a trusted one. So, it will go and uh, if you use the provisioner and uh, provision the node then you get these three which I mentioned to you uh, unicast address network key and uh, device key you are now part of the network and you can be you can start participating uh, receiving data and uh, rebroadcasting it and so on and so forth. Okay. So, the SDK here actually supports all of that we will now go and see a little bit of what standard Bluetooth mesh networking standard supports for us. Uh, so, let us read up a little bit of uh, get into a little more detail on the on the mesh itself. Yeah. So, if you talk about uh, mesh systems you can take a nice example of uh, let us say you imagine arriving at an office come out alight from the car or from your vehicle the security system will allow you to uh, will, will allow you inside and put your and show you your parking slot automatically. So, once you are in the parking slot uh, you go there drive it and leave it there. Then what you do you start entering you park and then enter the main building. Now, once you enter the building uh, there are other sensors which will note that you have come in and they identify you from the wearable technology about your person and uh, they, they, the, you, they you go to the elevator automatically the elevator will open close and then actuate it and then take you directly to the second floor. Once you arrive as usual uh, the lift door opens lights from the elevator to your office and kitchen come uh, come on coffee is deemed of strategic importance. So, uh, other areas are left in the darkness to save power. So, you see uh, how the mesh is getting uh, working only a few nodes are uh, active and the other nodes in the mesh keep quiet uh, and then you walk to your office and enter close the door behind you the LED uh, down lights and your desk lamp are ready and at exactly the same level that you prefer. Go back to the original example I described about the lighting indoor lighting example which we discussed right in the beginning. This is quite similar to that right and uh, everything is suited for your convenience and for your ambience. The ambience is set up for your you. Okay. So, why that is all working it is because of the fact that you have a Bluetooth mesh okay, and you have a mesh lighting system. If you look at the stack the mesh model uh, one application which uh, Nordic has already given us is the mesh model related to lighting. Okay. The, this example is so simple that you can just download and install it it should start working and it will nicely connect to the blinds example that we were talking about. What is the light indoor what is the light outdoor if you had sensors uh, you can directly connect the sensors to them and you will have an application running right they in, instead of uh, uh, you know the blind control essentially here it is the same lighting control that is just about op not cl closing and opening blinds, but indeed about uh, lighting inside the house. In fact, we had also introduced the lighting as an additional node in that example. So, everything is connecting folks and how easy it is for you to look at the mesh model of that uh, system here. So, essentially what we have here in the in the demo here is uh, you can if you read this article it will tell you about advantages of mesh versus point to point uh, communication. Basically you are talking about many to many topology where each device is able to communicate with every other device and um, you have devices and nodes which are part of the mesh and are called nodes and those which are not 
uh, which are not are called unprovisioned nodes. Unless you provision it into the mesh, you cannot actually start using the services of the mesh. So, the process by which it transforms an unprovisioned device uh, into a node is called provisioning and I said about uh, that already that provisioning is a secure procedure and it uh, transfers uh, information from the provisioner onto the uh, end uh, device all right. So, all nodes in a mesh uh, possess at least one network net key and it is uh, and it is possession of this key which makes a device a member of the corresponding network and as such a, a node. I mentioned about this already that during provisioning all these things are actually happening. Now, uh, if you look at elements some nodes have multiple constituent parts each of which can be independently uh, controlled. Now, if you look at the mesh tepo, uh, terminology these are called elements. Now, look at this picture here there are three LED uh, lights which are stacked one uh, below the other these are three different independent LED lights ok. Uh, this is a lighting product which if added to the Bluetooth mesh network would form a single node with three elements you can abstract them as a single node ok with three elements node with three elements element 1, element 2 and element 3 right. Now, when a node needs to query the status of uh, other nodes uh, you uh, essentially or it needs control uh, from other nodes in some way it sends a message of suitable type and if the node needs to report its status to other nodes it also sends out a message ok. All communication in the network is message oriented this is a absolutely critical part and we will see a little bit of that as well here. Now, messages are coming under acknowledged and unacknowledged uh, acknowledged messages require a response essentially that also we can see out there. Now, addresses messages must be sent from and to an address Bluetooth mesh defines three types of addresses. There is a unicast address identifies a single element then you can have a group address it is a multicast address which represents one or more elements and uh, you can also have uh, what are known as virtual address it is also an address which may be assigned to one or more elements spanning one or more nodes right. So, it takes the form of 128 bit UUID value with which any element can be associated and is much like a label. This picture is uh, interesting right you have a node which is out here it publishes uh, data to kitchen and then there are three receivers or uh, subscribers to it. Uh, these three subscribers get the data and uh, depending on uh, what the command is that particular subscriber may actuate it may either be on off and so on. For example, this may have a command coming from this publisher to kitchen which says that you have to switch yourself off then this simply goes off. So, all of this is possible in the mesh uh, world. So, you can see these all publish and these are all uh, subscribe ok. It is also possible that you see this one picture like this it is also possible to see a picture like this where two nodes here are actually controlling this garden and then there are three uh, subscribers to this ok. You can think of your MQTT. Uh, topic can be garden and uh, here and then there are the publishers two of them here and then these are subscribers. Of course, uh, you have to specify the uh, uh, correct uh, wild card uh, routing key so that only that, uh, that particular device gets actuated uh, whether it is on off and so on all right. So, that is essentially the same paradigm here publish and subscribe. Uh, if you look at figure 4 which is this uh, figure I suppose yeah this is publish subscribe. Switch 1 is publishing to a group uh, address called kitchen. So, this is uh, you can think about this as the group address these are all group addresses and uh, it is uh, publishing to a group address kitchen nodes light 1 uh, light 2 and light 3 each subscribe to this uh, group address called uh, kitchen and uh, the address and therefore, receive the process of uh, message uh, process messages uh, light 1, light 2, three, light 3 each subscribe to the kitchen address and therefore, receive and process messages published to this address ok. Now, switch 2 it publishes to a group called dining room you can see this here this is switch 2 and then it is uh, to a dining room and uh, light 3 alone subscribe to it. So, you can have different combinations of all of them. Uh, then 
the uh, elements uh, the, there are what are known as states and properties elements can be in various conditions and this is represented in Bluetooth mesh by the concept of state values okay. A state value a state is a value of a certain type contained within the uh, within an element and uh, an example could be consider a simple light uh, which may either be on or off right. So, Bluetooth mesh defines a state called generic on off this is a state name of the state the light would possess this state item uh, and uh, a value of on would correspond to and cause the light to be illuminated whereas, a generic on off state value of off would reflect the cause uh, and cause the light to be switched off right. So, as simple as this. So, let us see the uh, uh, demonstration and uh, then we will uh, you will perhaps be able to connect to all the uh, discussions that we have had now. So, here is the demonstration there are three devices here let us start with the most important device which is the NRF 52832 devices uh, this is the development board you can see and uh, this one is the provisioner here there is a client and here there is a server. Now, the client will actuate the server to do something this is a simple lighting on off example you can see right now there is no uh, there are no lights on or off here. Uh, something after provisioning uh, we can actually be able to you will be able to see that uh, actually we have made it ready for you for the demonstration. So, uh, you, if, a, if a key is pressed on the client the server will get actuated all right. Now, what should be the provisioner what all it should do uh, before you start participating in the mesh this provisioner is a secure device this is absolutely important right it is a secure device itself and uh, the act of provisioning is done by this provisioner and it is inside a trusted device and it has access to full list of devices uh, the network and their addresses this is absolutely critical. And every time it provisions a node either a client or a server the following will actually come through what all will it get it will get the unicast address a network key and a device key all three of them will be uh, will be available we can actually have a look at that. So, now let us see what are the keys which are uh, part of uh, what the provisioner does this key is essentially the uh, the device uh, device key this is the device key as I mentioned to you whatever is highlighted there and this one is the this is the network uh, key uh, whatever is highlighted now is indeed the network key all right. So, then there is another key which is called the application key this is perhaps for the application end to end you need to have a key. So, that you will be able to decrypt the data and uh, you should be you should be able to use uh, in a secure manner you should be able to make an actuation operation you should be able to actuate. So, that is about what the provisioner does let us also look at what other things are possible you also have the unicast address of the system and you can see what is highlighted there indeed is the unicast address. So, provisioning folks is a very involved process of uh, several keys as well as uh, the uh, uh, address being addresses being assigned to. So, that it now joins the uh, network all right. So, these are the important things. Now, what we will do is having seen the provisioning part we will now do a key press on the client side. So, that uh, an actuation happens on the uh, server side you do not need the provisioner anymore actually even without the provisioner anyway we have kept it on here you can also keep it off it should work without any uh, any problem. So, let us see what Vasant does he presses a key this is a lighting example ha huh, there you are you see he has switched on this LED uh, every time he presses uh, he get the LED uh, comes up here uh, this is the LED of interest if he re releases the LED is switch off and now it is on right. So, this is essentially the lighting example I told you uh, think about a light they sent a signal. So, that it can switch on the lights now uh, that is easy to trigger on the client side if you have a PIR sensor or any uh, you human occupancy sensor a trigger comes and then once the trigger comes this guy will broadcast and this server will uh, realize uh, that it should switch on and then it will switch on the light whatever example I told you in the class or when what we discuss 
is easily realizable by interfacing several types of sensors to this board. It could be occupancy sensors or it could be HVAC sensors and so on and so forth. Now let us see the messages. Uh, you know when a, mode, uh, when a node needs to query the status of other nodes and uh, or it needs to control other nodes in some way, it sends a message of a suitable type and uh, if the node needs to report its status to other nodes, it also sends a message. All communication in the message in the mesh network is message oriented and there are basically two types of messages. One is uh, acknowledged and the other is unacknowledged. So, let us look at the acknowledged message. Okay, so, what is being highlighted now is the uh, acknowledged message. You can see that you have an acknowledgement which says the uh, uh, it, there is a success uh, of the uh, acknowledged ascending message. Now, you see uh, the uh, sending message on off is set to 1 and then you got an acknowledgement in the very next uh, uh, row you see an acknowledged transfer uh, success. So, that is it uh, folks, uh, I would strongly encourage you to download uh, this uh, toolkit from uh, Nordic and if you have the hardware, you could try practicing it. I am sure there are other vendors also who have given you uh, several samples of uh, uh, this system. You can download and install and put it up for future uh, building large mesh network systems. Thank you very much.